A common technique in risk analysis for defining the probability distribution associated with an improprimator is to use some sample data and fit a probability distribution to those sample data, assuming that they're random and independent. In this illustration, I'm going to generate some theoretical data and then fit a probability distribution to those theoretically generated data. I'm going to assume that the data uh, represent random measurements of the mass of sand grains in micrograms from beach. It has a mean of 15, standard deviation of 7, and the distribution follows a log normal. If I click on model risk ribbon and view function, you can see here a log normal distribution with the mean is 15, standard deviation 7. This is the shape of that distribution. This is a model risk function, fold log normal object. We use the object at the end of the log normal to say that we want to define the probability distribution. We're not taking a random sample from it directly. We're defining the distribution that is going to be used. Now to generate random samples, in this case, I'm going to be using the Vos simulate function. So we'll simulate with the probability distribution as at its input. In fact, I made this an array function all the way down to the end here. It's a one single function covering a large number of cells. And that's a very efficient way of randomly generating values in Excel from a probability distribution. I could equally have just put it in one cell equal row finger like click on that cell. You hit the F9 key and you will see it will randomly generate the value. It's not the only way of generating ran, um, random samples from a log normal distribution. You can use a function like first log normal directly. That first log normal or rec fake random samples from the log normal distribution, but that's not what we're trying to do right now. Okay, so these are our pretend random samples from uh, going to the beach and measuring the mass of sand grains. Let's take a small sample of that data. And we're going to fit the probability distribution to it. So to do so, I go to the model with ribbon, I take on fit, distribution fit, and then click on add. And I'll have a menu with various different categories of distribution on the left-hand side. In the middle, I've got all the probability distributions that could fit to the data. You can see there are many. The ones that are in blue are consistent with the data. So for example, these distributions here are discrete when, so we cannot fit to them because we have none integer values in the data set. Also, this distribution here will not fit because a beta only goes between zero and one, and we're seeing values outside that range. Now, these are sand grains, and when we look at Masu, it, they cannot be negative. So the, the minimum is zero, and that these distributions of, uh, appropriate will be left bounded. So we select the left bounded category, and we can see the probability distributions available to us here. Now we could click on this icon, the triple that arrow icon, and we'll assign all of the possible distributions to the we'll go and shit them or not. Um, it's generally not a good idea to just pick every possible distribution. It rather pick the distributions that you you know of and a feel of reasonable candidates for fitting to your data. So fatigue life, it turns out that would be a reasonable distribution because that's about breaking up of things. Uh, gamma distribution perhaps and the log gamma and the log beta distribution. You see, as I double click each of these distributions, they get added to the list on the right. Then I click OK. It's now fitted those four distributions, the gamma, the fatigue, the log gamma, and the log normal. The Schwartz information criteria, SIC, is how we're ranking the fit. The Schwartz 
uh, information criteria on all of these information criteria, they can alliance the probability distribution if it's got more parameters. So the gamma distribution you can see here is good, just got two parameters. But the fatigue life distribution has three. Because it's got three parameters, it has more flexibility in its shape. So it is more able to reflect the actual shape of the data without it being really a meaningful fit. So the information criteria allows to understand that, yeah, it, it fits better. You can see the fatigue life distribution has a lot likelihood ratio of one. That means that it the most likely to have generated the data. But the gamut distribution has the highest ranking for in according to Schwartz information criteria, and it's got a 99.5% chance of generating, relatively speaking, generating the data uh, compared to the fatigue life. So if we were to rank by likelihood ratio, you would pick, take the fatigue life distribution, but really the gamut distribution is the best fitting one. You'll notice that the log moment distribution, in fact, is the worst fitting, even though that's where the data came from. It is not guaranteed that when you have the relatively small sample, that your the actual theoretical distribution that the data might have come from would be the best fitting because of these things are random. But let's just click on the log normal. And we can see it has a mean of 15.9, that's nearly 16, the standard deviation of 8.4 compared with the 15 and seven of my original assumption. So close, but no cigar. Now to understand whether or not this fitted distribution is very stable, uh, if we were to collect more data, would we still have the same estimates? We can include uncertainty, this little option here, and the include uncertainty will simulate the different possible fitted distributions that you would have got with the same data size. You can see that there's quite a variation in here. If I change the numbers to 25, you can see that there's quite some uncertainty about what the, the true log normal distribution might have been. You can see that perhaps more precisely if I click on the big F of X icon here, which you can see the the little jagged blue line is the underlying data. The red line is the fitted, best fitting distribution. But these gray lines are showing us that actually, if you were to redo the sampling with the same amount of data, you could have got quite different results. Let's set, select this log normal distribution and send the fitted distribution into the model. We can click on insert to worksheet. And this offers several different options. We can put in a function that will take a random sample from the log normal distribution that are linked to the data set. A random sample of the best fitting log normal distribution that is not linked to the data set. Yes, make your parameters, the, a quantile function and an object. Let's put in the estimated parameters. We're asked to select two by two cells Take those there, okay, and then close. Now you will see that you've got the mean and standard deviation labels, and we've got this gray function it covers two cells because both the mean and standard deviation have been estimated together. And you can see that there is a true parameter. The true says that we are adding uncertainty about the fitted distribution parameters, and you can see it's linked to the data. Let's fix the data set. So I'll grab the data. Control C, haste, base. Now I've hit the Fman key, you will see that the data are no longer randomly changing. But you'll see that the parameter estimates are changing. So if I hit the F9 key, the values for the mean and standard deviation are changing because they are describing or simulating the uncertainty about how uh, the true value of those mean and standard deviation. If I hit the F2 button and click false, control shift enter because it's an array function. Now hit the F9 key, you'll see that these numbers are not changing. 
That's because we're now describing the best of team parameters. If I take on this function and then click view function, it will bring back up the distribution fitting interface where you see that log normal distribution with best fit of the data. It's a mean standard deviation. And I have the option of perhaps having some other functions. For example, instead of the estimated parameter, maybe I want to uh, take a random example. I will put it a single cell. Okay. And let's add another one here. We'll take uh, an object, put that here, cut. So there are different options when you're faking the distribution to data. Here, the function both log more fit, P for parameters, that is estimating the parameters of the log room distribution fit to the data. And you can see it's this data set here. This was a random sample fitted of a log normal distribution fitted to the data. Hit the F9 key, that will change. Here is a log normal distribution object fitted to the data. So it looks very much like the original log normal distribution object, but this one has parameters estimated from data was than once defined in the spreadsheet. Let's just grab the entire data set, some nearly a thousand data points and we'll fit them to our fit log norm distribution to them. Distribution fit, add, select a log norm. By the way, we can choose to view the list in various different ways. This might be easier. I double click the log moments here, per K. And you can see we fitted the data to the log normal, the parameter one was 15, was showing 14.7, parameter two was seven, was showing 6.93, so a, a quite a stable, uh, precise fit. If I include uncertainty now, and next put in, say, 25 lines again, you can see that there is very little variation because with a thousand data points, we're hit resampling or redoing the experiment with and per separate thousand data points, we're not likely to get a very different result. You can see when I click on the big F of X, we have a stably fit public distribution.